All right, man, talk to talk. Like, share, and subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. Look, man, I'm not done cooking, man. I ain't done cooking yet. I think there's some other things that I want to get out that I have to say. Because I've been peeping the, com the comments. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to lie. I lost some subscribers. I'm not going to lie. I have lost some subscribers. <clears throat> but I would rather you be here because you want to be here and you disagree with me than you being here because you think I'm going to say things to make you feel good. You don't have to follow me. You don't. You could disagree with me or you can agree with me. But that's what this channel was built off of. But I'm not done cooking because I think that there's some other things that need to be talked about that we need to listen to, that we need to hear. So before I get into that, this is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, if you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies, put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, you want to leave a donation, links on the screen. Cash app, PayPal is in the description. They called me the hidden gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 12,000 subscribers and trying to reach a million by Monday morning. It might be a little bit harder now because, you know, we eat some people out. Let me know where you're from, too. I really appreciate it. Somebody who's from Russia, and he congratulated me and said that keep doing, keep up the good work, keep fighting the good fight. Now, look, let's get into it. A lot of y'all have an issue with people giving you an opinion that they stand on. A lot of y'all out there listen to my content and y'all forget that I'm a human and I disagree with certain things. I agree with certain things. There's a lot of things that I just don't agree with and I will never agree with. I don't care how you try to twist it. I will never agree with it. That's just the bottom line. If you are one of those type of people who know something is wrong and you still go along with it because you don't want to offend somebody or you don't want to make somebody feel bad, then this page ain't for you. I'm not the guy you should be talking to. I'm not for disrespecting people. I'm for respecting people to the utmost respect. But I'm not going to cater to your feelings because you want me to make you feel good. I'm not going to do that. All of us need to accept accountability when it comes to certain things. A good portion of us, we don't accept it. We're so afraid to say, you know what? You right, bro. I was wrong. How can we have a dialogue about it and get past it? We okay with just saying it's okay. And in turn, what goes down the line is people believe stuff's okay. And years down the line, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Then you, you breed all these different type of personalities. Now they believe that they are entitled to it and they're supposed to have it. That's what it is. So getting into this election, and I know a lot of y'all hate to hear it. Y'all can't stand it, but we're going to talk about it. I'm not done cooking. We're going to talk about it because I think us as black people, we need to hear this. Now, somebody in the comments said something real interesting. They said, how can you be a passport? You a self-proclaimed passport, bro, and you are criticizing a woman for being married to a white man, right? That's what they said. First of all, let's get this clear. I'm not criticizing her for being married to a white man. What I'm, in, what I'm saying is if you want to use identity politics against the black people, then at least you should have 
a black husband. That's the least that you can do. You can't tell me that I should treat somebody like a queen, a black queen at that, when they're married to a different person or different man, different ethnicity. Let's just get that out the way. But that, we ain't going to speak on that. I just want to say that real quick. But let's talk about us as black people, because I think that's what we're here for. Aren't y'all tired? Aren't y'all tired of feeling like they're using you? Aren't y'all tired of feeling like, like the system is working against you? Aren't you tired of that? And no, don't jump in the comments talking about some, well, you think Trump's going to change that? No, I'm asking you, are you tired of it? Because you've been doing the same thing for the last 15, 20, 30 years, 40 years. You've been voting for the same people. Did anything change for you? The same people you've been voting for. Has anything changed for you? And I'm talking about the people who vote primarily Democrat. Has anything changed for you since you've been voting Democrat? Forget the Republicans. Forget Trump. Has anything changed for you since you've been voting Democrat? Since we're going to talk, let's talk. Or we're going to talk today. Nothing changed for you. Look at your inner cities. All over the United States, look at the inner cities. You vote for the same people, you get the same results. You can't talk to me about how I should feel. I lived in the inner cities. I know how it is. I grew up there. They never did nothing for us. But we said of us sitting around, we sitting around not doing nothing about it. Because you know why? We became used to handouts. Now we think that we are, are supposed to get these handouts. They've been giving us handouts for so long that we believe we're supposed to get it. We deserve it. How you going to cut this? You can't cut funding to that. What about the people that's been doing this for 30 years? You think you're going to cut that? What about them? People, us as black people, we became accustomed to living off of these things. And I know people are going to say, well, if they're living in poverty, how can they get out of it? You got to vote for other people. Stop registering. Stop being a, 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 a lifelong registered Democrat. That's what it is. I could go down the history of all the things that the Democratic Party has done to the black community. A history. But I ain't going to do all that. We just going to talk about what's going on now. So you know why she lost. Because they're, because they're outdated. And some of the things that they say and do, black people are not comfortable with that. Some of y'all will go along with it because y'all have no choice. In your head, y'all feel like there's no other choice. I have to go along with it. But ask yourself, why is it that you have people like Michelle Obama and Barack Obama who are married telling your daughters that it's okay for them to be single and not be married and have kids and not have kids. Why do you think that that's okay for them to tell you that? They're married with children. They're rich. Everybody that was around, everybody, everybody that was around Kamala Harris has children and they're married. But yet and still, except for Megan. That's it. Other than that, Alicia Keys, Beyonce, Cardi B was, was married. All these people, all these women was around her telling you that it's okay for you to make decisions that's not good for you in the long run. And I know y'all going to say, well, who are you to say it's not good for me in the long run? Look at the stats. What do you mean? I'm going off the statistics. No black woman should be single. I don't care how they try to promote it to you. If you have a baby, you should either be with that baby father or you should be with a man, period. You shouldn't be single raising a child. I know y'all probably going to get mad at that, but hey, it's the truth. You would have, you'd rather have a good man helping you raise your child than you be single. Because children need both of their parents. We always talk about white people, and we always talk about how white people are getting over and how other, other ethnicities getting over. They all stick together. That's why. Forget the white people. Let's look at the other countries. You think it's an epidemic 
going on of single women in these other countries? No, it's not. And I know some of y'all say, well, the reason why that is because the men be controlling these women and they be making women do it. No, they don't. Women know the role that they play and men know the role that they play. And I ain't going to get into all that. I'm just going to say we lost our way as black people because we don't respect each other. Especially black women and black men. We don't respect each other. They made y'all think that y'all in charge. And in some cases, y'all are in charge. Not to say y'all not. But they made, if they made you feel like no matter what man you with, you always going to be in charge. You can't. You don't have to listen to him. Who is he? Who is he, who, who is he to tell you that? Oh, yeah, we're going to talk today. We're going to talk today. Because I think y'all need to hear this. I'm not saying that every woman has to go out there and be submissive to a guy. No, he has to work for your submission. That's how it goes. I'm not saying that you have to uh, automatically be like this. Like, no. He has to work for it. Just like you got to work for him, him to, be, to be a good man. You can't be posting stuff on Instagram and all over the place and expecting a man to want to just be with you when you providing uh, uh, all these things. And the same thing with men. You can't expect a woman to just want to be with you if you following all these girls with big asses and every always in their inbox. It don't work like that. We got to get back to respecting each other because we don't respect each other. That's what it is. So it has nothing to do with red pill, black pill, or blue pill, none of that. It's about respect. Every man has a natural role. Every woman has a natural role. But people want to inter they want to intertwine them. It don't work like that. So this is why she lost, because she's promoting stuff to young ladies and young women that most people just ain't a cool. They're not agreeing with it. I'm going to be honest with y'all. This is exactly how she could have won the election. This is what I think she should have did. I believe Kamala Harris should have came out and said, you know what? I'm not worried about whether Trump is a dictator or a fascist. I don't care if y'all call him Hitler. I'm a better candidate than him. I'm not going to sit here and, and say he's Hitler. I'm not. He was the president. Why would I say he Hitler? No. All that stops today. I'm just going to beat him on the policies that I have for the American people. That's how she could have won the, won the what's the name? But she's beholden to the party that's making her do these things. How, how, how is President Obama going to try to scold black men for not voting for her? Who are you to tell me that I shouldn't be vote, that I should vote for her? You didn't do anything you said you was going to do when you was in office, so why should I listen to you? Then you're going to tell me, and this is what I mean by the mind fuck, you're going to tell me, or not me, but people, oh, yeah, don't make me get Michelle. As if you're going to go, like, that's your mother. Don't make me go get your mother. You the man. How you telling me that I should be scared of the woman? I should be scared of Michelle Obama? Why? That comes back from the whole slave mentality. A lot of y'all don't even know that. The big mama situation. That's what that's all from. Big mama took care of everything. Big mama was the one that disciplined everybody. Even the father. Because if they could keep big mama in the house, they could keep all you niggas in line. Every one of you niggas. And that's exactly what he did. You offering black men weed. Kamala Harris is offering black men weed when she's known for locking black men up for weed. The irony in that is crazy to me. This is why she lost. She didn't resonate with the people. The people want something different. All the whole four years that Biden's been in office, people couldn't wait till he got out of office. That's black, white, Asian, Hispanic, anybody, Indian, a Native American, anybody. They wanted him out. And you know how you, you know how you know they wanted him out? Because his approval rating was like 34%. So now he wanted him in there. That's the thing. So a lot of y'all, 
I love the fact, I love the fact that I can see in real time people leaving the page because that lets me know that you're not here for a dialogue. You're here for me to make you feel good. And I'm not doing that. I'm not for that. I'm here to provide a dialogue. And if we disagree, we disagree. But that's what I'm here for. One of my boys was telling me, bro, you sure you want to do that? Why not? The people that's here respect me. And I respect them. It's people that say stuff in the comments. You think I delete y'all? Do you think I just go down the list and, ups, uh, and, and block you? No, I don't. People say a lot of things. But I don't, I don't block you. I don't do none of that. Because you have the right to say what you want to say. Just like I do. But it is what it is. But us as black people, we need to start understanding that we are so much more powerful together than apart. How can you let feminism destroy the black man and the black woman? How can you do that? How could you let the federal government come in and tell you that you can't have a man in your house? They've been putting us, to, pinning us to, uh, uh, against each other. The black man and the black woman have been fighting each other for years. This is why whenever you see something and, and uh, during this election, you know what they say? Oh, it's black men fault. It's black men fault. But there's a lot of black women who voted for Trump, too. But, you know, they blame us, the black man. Because we know and we outspoken and we'll take the bullet. This is why I believe that if, if, a, if a killer come in the house, guess who's supposed to go downstairs? Not the woman. It's supposed to be the man. You my wife, I'm taking it for you. I'm taking a bullet for you. That's how it's supposed to go. You ain't going to do it. And I wouldn't want you to do it. And I wouldn't expect you to do it. Just like if I got into a fight. I ain't telling you. I'm telling you to run. Run. Especially when we have children. Because you got to take care of those kids. If I'm gone. But if we both gone, who's going to take care of our kids? That's how it goes. So I'm saying if I get into a fight and you stand there, you, know, you better run as fast as you can. I'm going to take care of it. That's how it goes. And this is not me trying to control anybody or be a, uh, make you be a robot. No. As a man, the position I'm in, and I am the protector. So if something happens, I got to step up to it. And if you believe differently, that's because feminism has fucked you up. It made you believe something different. Your father protected your mother, right? So you should be mad at your man protecting you. It's not that you can't, you're incapable of doing something. You incapable, you are capable of doing it, but I could do it better when it comes to fighting. Unless you were trained, and even that's the case, you don't necessarily pan out sometimes too. So you got to understand, they did this to divide us even more. They installed this woman, whether you want to say she's black or not, and the first thing they do is attack black men for not voting for her. And then y'all want to say that this side is racist. But what about the side that's telling you that you need to get in line, nigga, and vote for this person, nigga? All this stuff about the patriarchy and, and, and uh, white supremacy, that all goes out the window. You know why? Because she's married to a white man. You can't tell me that the patriarchy and white supremacy is real if your husband is white. Your husband's white. So all that to me is just smoke and mirrors. I'm not saying that you can't be married to anybody that's white. More power to you. I got cousins that's married to white women. I got cousins that's married to uh, white men. It's no big deal. I'm just saying you can't use that as a talking point of white supremacy if you're laying down with the supremacists that you claim is a white supremacist. You can't do it. So don't tell me about the patriarchy. Don't tell me about how uh, 
we're stuck in a situation. You're not stuck in no situation. Everybody in this country has the same opportunities. And I know it comes as a shocker to you, but you do. If you didn't do nothing crazy, you have the same opportunities as everybody else. Everybody. And here's the crazy part about it, right? You can literally leave and go to a different country and never come back. Does that sound like someone's trying to hold you here? I have to say this. Maybe a lot of us are used to being a certain way. We're used to being treated a certain way. It's kind of like an abusive relationship. You make up all these excuses for the person. But you complain about the person, but then you make up all these excuses. That's what America is to some of y'all. Some of y'all that claim that America is so bad, but y'all don't want to leave America. Y'all rather stay here. Why? You could leave. You could leave. And that's it. And you don't have to worry about America. But no. And we're going to talk today. We're going to talk. So let's talk about y'all fake Christians, right? And some of y'all fake Muslims too. But let's talk about y'all fake Christians. And I know it's going to get a lot of people feathers rubbed food. I don't care. I don't care. How can you say you're a Christian, but you support certain things that happen to certain people? You support wars. You support abortion. You support all these things, but you're a Christian. I thought that you wasn't supposed to support that. Oh, and by the way, Obama, remember, he said he was going to do something, but he's a Christian, right? He said he was going to do something for Maybe he is. I don't know if he's a, if a Catholic or not, but he said he was going to do something for women's rights, right? Obama. And he was in office. He had the House and the Senate. He didn't do it. And let's be honest. The reason why he didn't do it, and I know y'all gonna, it's going to sound like a shocker to y'all, but this is what we're here for. The reason why the Democrats will never, ever, ever get rid of the issue of abortion is because that's the issue that they can run on. That's it. The economy, everybody can run on the economy. Republicans usually run on the economy. But everybody can run on that. But the Democrats will always have the woman vote because they get in your feelings and they run on that. They could solve that. They could get that, whatever issue it is. But they will keep kicking that can down the road because they know that you're going to come out and vote. Because most of y'all are one-issue voters. Y'all don't care about nothing else. The city could be on fire behind you. And you wouldn't even care. You only care about the issue that you think is going to affect you. And some of y'all can't even have children. But y'all push it off on everybody else. Oh, this isn't right. They shouldn't be able to tell you what you can't do. No, what they really is saying, what y'all really saying is, and it's the truth, what y'all really saying is, they can't tell me whether to be a whore or not. And we ain't talking about the women that's been, that's been uh, assaulted. Because the guys that do that to them, they should be deleted immediately. We talking about the ones that take advantage of the system, knowing that they can use it as contraceptive. That's what we talking about. Or we gonna talk today. And there are a lot of y'all like, where's all this energy coming from? Where's this coming from? This energy always been here. This is torture talk. And I'm just telling you that I care about my people 100%. And what we're going through is a crisis. And a lot of y'all don't wanna admit it because y'all comfortable with it. Y'all might not like what I'm saying, but y'all know it's the truth. You can't be comfortable with something like that. I know a girl who had six abortions. Six. You comfortable with that? You okay with that? So that means that whoever her parents was, they did not teach her responsibilities. We're talking about people who are willingly doing things, not somebody that was forced to do something. So don't jump in the comments talking about, oh, this person was probably, no. We're talking about people who willingly did it. One of my ex-girlfriends, her friend had four, and she couldn't get another one because she lost her ID. So she looked like 
my girlfriend, and she took my girlfriend's ID and went and got another one. So she got five. What are y'all going to say? Well, maybe you should be more responsible. And the same thing goes for men. Y'all here shooting up the club, got all these women, single baby mothers. How can you as one man, one man, have 12 kids? There's no way in the world you could tell me that you could be the father of 12 kids uh, uh, consistently. Unless those kids living with you, you got 12 kids by 12 different women. How is that? How is that productive? That's not productive. We're not uh, uh, moving along in society like that as black people. And this is where you get the deadbeat dads from. Because men think with their, you know how it goes. And we just do whatever. And it's not right. Because you got a lot of women out here who buy themselves and they shouldn't be. Things don't work out. I get it. I understand. But don't let that be an excuse of why you delete a child. It's certain things that I could go deep on that, but I'm not. I'm just going to say, if you teach your son's responsibility and you teach your daughter's responsibility, we could cut that in half. We could cut it in half. At least we could work towards it. So we can't keep letting these people use us for our vote because that's what they do. They give you a little bit and they say to you subliminally, make sure you make sure you remember who helped you. Make sure you remember who helped you. You better make sure. And they keep you in this continuous cycle, whether it's Republican or Democrat. And most of these are Democrats. Keep black people in a continuous cycle. You ever ask yourself, why is it that Black people vote overwhelmingly Democrat, but we have nothing to show for it. All of these dudes are men. It's kind of like it's kind of like the pastor in the church, right? Not all pastors, because I know some good pastors. So it's kind of like the pastor in the church, who has a, he driving a he driving a Mercedes Benz. He got a, he got two homes, one house down down south. He got you know he's living good, and you live in the hood, and he don't got no job. He just get he just collects money from you. And say, so, oh, this, this money is for the Lord. This money is for God. Oh, this is for the church. Making $2.5 million a year. And you have nothing. Only thing you're paying for is the word, which you shouldn't be paying for that. It should be given to you out of the kindness of people's heart. Supposed to teach you, Right? But this is what it is. But us as black people, we okay with that. We okay with it. I've seen it happen. I've seen people be okay with pastors robbing their grandmothers. They've been robbing your grandmothers for years. And no one says anything about it. Y'all turn your head to it. Y'all don't want to be honest about it. Same thing that happens in the black community. Well, our kids are getting molested by other family members. Nobody want to say nothing about it. Everybody want to be quiet about it. You know, you know, Uncle, Uncle, uh, Uncle Jimmy, you know what he's been doing, but you don't want to say nothing about it. It's certain things that we keep close to our chest when it should be exiled. It should be out of there. So I admit that we do have some, uh, Things that goes on in our heads, mental, uh, mental uh, things that fuck us up and that's been fucking us up for years. We do have that. But it's time for us to get past all this. We got to wake up. You can't sit around and constantly let this stuff keep happening. Because it's okay. Because it's normalized. We're the only people that are normalized when it comes to living in shacks and all types of stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some people in red states who live like that, too. But us, we're the same way. We're, we're, we're normalized living with rats and roaches. We're normalized with that. That shouldn't be normal. We should have something better for that. 
That's the thing. So again, if you look at the states and you look at all the counties that voted overwhelmingly for Donald Trump, it's because a change is coming. And most people who live in these counties that's predominantly black, a good portion of them did vote for Donald Trump, even if they were Republican, um, Democrats, because they're sick and tired of certain things that's going on. Now, we ain't going to say, we're not going to get there and say that he's going to be perfect, he's going to get in there and change everything. We're not going to say that. We're just going to say, if the opposition would have got in there, you already know the continuation would have happened. You had your chance. I had my chance. I did better than you. And stop all this. And this is why I'm going to end it here. Stop all this. Um, everybody's going to hell and we're going to die and all this stuff. Stop all that. Because it doesn't make any sense. The man was already president. Did he do it before? He was already president. And I know people who say, well, you got to understand. No, no, no. And I'll be honest with y'all. I think Democrats actually took this. I think they kind of knew he was going to win. And they kind of took this loss surprisingly better than I thought they would take it. Be honest with y'all. You know what I'm saying? And even though I don't think that uh, they would have did anything crazy, but they would have, they, they definitely took it. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's, that's what it is. And also, she also conceded. You know what I'm saying? But that just shows you, that just goes to show you the character of her because she didn't concede last night and she left her people standing out there and she just left. And then she sent somebody else out there. And I know I'll probably get a lot of hate for saying this, but this to me, this is why you have to be real careful about what woman you put in power. Because a good portion of women are very, very emotional. And they will, they will move off their emotions. You can't say y'all don't because I know for a fact that y'all do because y'all say y'all do. You can't say y'all don't. A lot of women move off their emotions. You know what I'm saying? Y'all do. Y'all say y'all emotional creatures. Whenever it's an argument, y'all always say y'all emotional. Whenever you have your period, y'all emotional. Do what you say. So, all I'm saying is, if she's going to leave her people out there who was standing out there waiting for her to come out, and she left them out there and sent a man out there at that to talk for her, she told you right there that I don't think she was ready to be president anyway. So, either way, man, I love you guys, man. I just want to tell you, everybody that left, I love y'all too. I know, know y'all probably got a little upset. I get it. I understand. Sometimes it's very hard to hear certain opinions i get it you don't have to stay around i understand it you know what i'm saying i ain't mad i understand it i'm just saying hey the subscribe door is always open you can come back whenever you're ready all right man love y'all see y'all man i'm out of here i'm gonna get me some wings man and all that good stuff i'm hungry as hell you know what i'm saying i'm gonna go get me some wings see y'all man peace Bye.